Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Center. 64 year old male <coughs> presented to ER with alleged history of RTA. Patient was helmeted rider, fell on to his right side, sustaining injury to right shoulder. On initial 10 second assessment, patient is alert, can talk. <coughs> Primary survey, airway is patent, no secretions. Cervical spine, no external penetrating injuries or blunt trauma. Uh, breathing, respiratory rate is 13 per minute, saturation 100% on room air. Chest movements are normal, air entry bilaterally equal. Circulation, heart rate is 86 per minute. BP is 130 bar 90 millimeters of mercury or peripheral pulses equally felt, no active bleeding sites. Disability, GCS 15 by 15, pupils bilaterally equal reacting to light. Patient was holding his right forearm with his left uh, arm. Pain score was 7 by 10. Uh, at this time, injection PCM 1 gram IV stack was given. Exposure, temperature 98.6 degree Fahrenheit, GRBS is 128 milligram percentage. Adjuncts to primary survey, ABG was taken, no acid base imbalance, no hypoxemia or hypercarbia. Chest X-ray AP was taken and showing, showing a right clavicular fracture over the middle one third. Okay, so um, do you think ABG is required in this patient? Um, any chest injuries? In chest injuries, uh, when all can, what all, what all ABG abnormality are you expecting in a patient with trauma? Um, if any lung injury, mm. it will be hypoxemia. Hypoxia can be, but patient is maintaining saturation, saturation. Mm. in room air itself, okay. okay. Then? Um, we can look for any uh, hemoglobin drop. Hemoglobin drop. Then if there is hypoperfusion, yeah. lactate, lactate, will be lactate. lactate will be there. And <coughs> if the patient is having ongoing bleeding, we need to look for the base deficit also. Base deficit, uh, we can see in our ABG value. So, based on the base deficit, uh, we can classify the shock. So, there are four grades of shock. So, uh, we have base deficit value from, um, uh, it, it can be minus 2, minus 2 to minus 6, minus 6 to minus 10 and more than minus 10. So, up to minus 2, class 1, uh, 2 to minus 2 to minus 6, 2. Then 2 to 10, uh, minus 6 to minus 10, grade uh, class 3 and more than minus 10 is class 4. Mm. So, uh, we can check the acid base abnormalities, lactate. Mm. Then we can check the hemoglobin mm. uh, base deficit also. But in this patient, I don't think that is required. So, uh, this patient was a helmeted bike rider, mm. uh, fell from bike, bike um, skid and fall. Skid and fall. Okay, okay. Uh, so, what all things will you ask in the initial history itself? when the patient presents? Uh, whether there was helmet or not. Oh, helmet or not. Mm, okay. Any LOC, head injury LOC. Mm. Um, uh, from the mechanism of injury, what will you ask? Whether he was thrown out of the thrown out of the bike. So, uh, okay, that is very important. Uh, because uh, the that means uh, uh, severe, uh, severe mechanism of injury. Okay. So, uh, this is a bike rider. Uh, if it is a car rider, what will you ask? A seat belt. A seat belt worn or not. All patients, when patient comes with trauma, you need to ask where the position of the patient was in the vehicle. Either it will be a pillion rider or it will be the bike rider. Or it, uh, the patient might be sitting on the side or back. The exact position of the patient should be asked. And along with that, the mechanism of injury. Mechanism Was it a head-on collision? Side-to-side collision? or just fell even though if it is skid and fall fell to right side or left side those mechanism uh, is also important mm -hmm. so uh, this comes into play when we are checking uh, the wounds and all so that mechanism is very important and whether the patient was thrown out whether the patient um, got exposed to some burns or anything whether the patient fell into water such things should be mentioned because if the patient had uh, if the vehicle had burns and all we will have to suspect airway injury <coughs> and other burns things if the patient ha was exposed to water, drowning, that thing will come. Or if at all that area was raining, because in our state and all mostly there will be raining and all. So there can be, oh, what if the patient is uh, getting an RT in the rain, what ha what can happen? Hypothermia. That also will be there. So such things also should be mentioned. So uh, what is the difference in primary survey of a trauma victim and other cases? What extra things will you check? Cervical spine. Cervical spine. 
so this patient uh, uh, cervical spine uh, was normal okay. so when will you suspect a cervical spine injury um, any penetrating or blunt trauma or any abrasions mm, any external injuries okay. seen then high velocity, uh, high velocity injuries then any focal neurological deficits ah uh, focal neurological deficits mm? weakness ah uh, ah uh, focal neurological deficits then a neck pain then if the patient is not conscious enough to answer you uh, if the patient is having low gcs in such cases mandatory you will have to put a c collar because we don't know whether it is injured or not or the patient is having is under the influence of any alcohol any other drugs also you need to suspect that okay so this patient didn't have that so in the primary survey airway you will have to look for the c spine also in the airway itself what will you check what are abnormalities can be there in the airway uh, injuries over the ah ah trauma injuries so there can be bleeding can be there any malocclusion of teeth anything is there any facial abnormalities that itself can affect the mouth opening or any swelling or hematoma inside the mouth because of trauma itself there can be edema and all this thing such things should, should be checked and also airway when you're checking uh, you need to check for the mandibular area also if there is any mandibular fracture or something so if there is bilateral mandibular fracture and all that airway will get affected so in the airway you need to look into that or any abnormal secretions any foreign body anything and c spine we have already mentioned <coughs> then breathing what will you check <coughs> any tracheal shift yeah, tracheal shift neck veins mm. <coughs> ah neck veins this is just primary survey only so mainly air entry uh, air entry the saturation the uh, trachea and external appearance we will be also in the exposure pass we will be also checking for any burns or any abnormal uh, movements of the chest circulation what else extra we will check any bleeding uh, actively along with heart rate bp we will be checking for any active bleeding bleeding sites okay uh, <coughs> Uh, in the uh, when you come to bp and heart rate what abnormalities will you expect initially if the patient is having ongoing bleeding inside suppose it is like inside uh, or outside anywhere you you know the patient is having bleeding uh, and if the patient is going into hypotension what features will you see first tachycardia tachycardia will be there mm. then pulse pressure so first tachycardia will be there then the pulse pressure will get narrow then the third stage is hypotension so uh, so initially if the patient is in class 1 shock and all nothing will be there so when patient goes into class 2 shock there can be tachycardia and narrowing pulse pressure when patient goes to class 3 there will be hypotension okay and disabilities we will be looking for the gcs and any gross disabilities which we are able to make out any focal neurological deficits or any <coughs> other things and exposure we will have to always check the temperature also even though we are not expecting fever in a patient with trauma you need to check the temperature to look for hypothermia and we need to expose the entire body to see for injuries burns any swellings deformities and after that you need to cover with blanket okay Uh, so adjuncts what all things will you do uh, adjuncts we uh, in this patient you ask for x ray what uh, other adjuncts will you ask for in trauma patients abg uh, abg if required then if you are suspecting a high velocity injury Mm. ultrasound fast e fast should be done so the chest and abdomen should be screened and if there is a, a ongoing active bleeding what will you give Mm, compression should be there then mm, arrange for blood two large bore iv cannula should be inserted analgesic should be given and tranexamic acid so uh, how much is the tranexamic acid dose 1 mm, gram how will you give 100 ml ah 100 ml ns over 10 minutes 20 minutes 1 gram in 100 ml ns over 20 minutes if it is a child what will be the dose 20 mg per kg so initial tranexa 1 g in 100 ml ns over 20 minutes mm. if bleeding is still there you can give the tranexa infusion mm. so fix to first dose is 1 g over 20 minutes in 100 ml ns then infusion doses any idea uh, 1 g in 1 liter of 
uh, fluid over 8 hours. So don't just stop with Tranexa injection. If there is ongoing bleeding, give infusion. 1 gram in 1 liter of fluid over 8 hours. Okay. So this patient is having an x-ray. You are seeing a right clavicular fracture. Anything else? What else will you check in the x-ray? Yeah, rib fracture. Rib fracture. Trauma victim. Trauma victim. X-ray. Pneumothorax. Pneumothorax. Hemothorax. Hemothorax. Subcutaneous emphysema. Mm. So this patient, um, ideally we can do a E-fast also. If at all the X-ray is getting delayed, we will have to check the E-fast and we will have to look for any pneumothorax or any uh, hemothorax and the lung sliding also should be checked. Okay. Um, so this patient is having uh, pain. So you have given PCM. PCM. What other analgesics can you give? Where exactly is the fr a fracture? Middle, Middle third. third. Middle third. What other thing you can do? <coughs> uh, sling or... I mean, immobilization. I mean, immobilization. So, ask the patient not to move. How much should you ask the patient to immobilize? Ask the patient not to move the limb, upper limb, especially if, the, if it, this is involving the right side, right? So, ask the patient not to abduct, flex or extend the right upper limb more than 30 degrees. If the patient moves more than 30 degree, then the clavicular movement will come. So, more than 30 degree abduction, extension or flexion shouldn't happen. So, immobilization you can ask. We can give IV analgesics. And one simple step which you can do if it is happening at your home, what can you do? Ice pack. Ice pack application. So, ice pack can be done. Immobilization should be done and analgesics can also be done. Okay. Um, <coughs> second to survey. <coughs> A uh, 64 year old male, non case of dyslipidemia, presented to ER with alleged history of RTA, skid and fall from bike. Patient was helmeted bike rider. He fell onto his right side, sustaining injury to right shoulder. He developed pain over his right clavicle and was not able to lift his right arm. Uh, head and maxillofacial examination, no last. Other uh, sample history, what all will you ask? <coughs> mm. uh, S4? Um, S4 signs and symptoms. Mm. A4? A for allergies. Allergy. Medicines. Uh, medications. What is the uh, importance of medications in a trauma patient? Uh, whether beta blockers or... Uh, any anticoagulants or any antiplatelets patient is taking. Then what is the other significance? Beta blockers. Uh, if the patient is on any beta blockers, calcium channel block, any rate controlling medicine, the tachycardia, which is the initial manifestation of shock, won't be seen. Then M, uh, M is over. Then P for past medical histories. Then L... Uh, last meal. Mm. Last meal along with that in females what should you ask in LMP. L LMP, last menstrual period. And E for events. Mm. Events and environment also you need to ask. Environment in the sense as I told any burns was there or any rain or any exposure to water. Anything that can cause hypothermia mm. or burns that should be asked. In our mm, place we are not expecting hypothermia but environment should be inquired in all cases. Okay. <coughs> head and maxillofacial. So, in all trauma patients, after primary survey, uh, you will be doing the adjuncts to primary survey. Before going to secondary survey, you need to reassess the primary survey. Mm? And uh, then sample history. Then we will have to do a complete evaluation. So, if at all the patient, this patient is stable, but all other patients, you need to reassess before each survey. Okay. Uh, head and maxillofacial. No lacerations or contusions, pupils bilaterally equal and reacting, no ENT blade. C spine and neck, on inspection, no signs of blunt or penetrative <coughs> trauma, <coughs> no use of accessory muscles, palpation, C spine is non tender, no deformity or swelling, auscultation, no carotid artery brewing. Chest inspection, no blunt or penetrating injuries, palpation, non tender, uh, normal vesicular breath sounds, heard and clear. Abdomen, <coughs> non tender, soft. Perineum, no contusions or hematoma, no mitral bleeding. Pelvis, compression test is negative. Musculoskeletal examination, right upper limb. On inspection, deformity noted over right clavicle. Abrasions, uh, 2 into 3 centimeter on shoulder, 1 into 1 centimeter on forearm, 3 into 1.5 centimeter on lateral aspect of forearm, and 1.5 into 1.5 centimeter on back of wrist. Palpation, local warmth over right clavicle. Tenderness was present and palpable deformity was present. Movements uh, was restricted due to pain, 
the neurovascular examination, distal pulses were present, sensations are intact. Um, diagnosis, isolated right clavicular fracture, middle one third, almond type 1 without any neurovascular deficits. Mm. Okay, so uh, so what are uh, so clavicle is there? So clavicle uh, injuries. This is middle third. So where all can clavicle get fractured? Uh, middle third, mm. lateral one third or middle, middle one. Middle. So mostly it will be middle, middle third. Why? Uh, less than, more exposed. Uh, uh, more than more exposed is clavicle is having an S shape. So that bend is there. So because of that, it will be uh, having the tendency to fracture more over there. Mm -hmm. And the lat uh, it is mostly towards the medial, middle and also to the towards the lateral it is getting attached to the rest of the uh, organs and also mostly the uh, sometimes uh, so most common it will be in the middle third and because of the uh, uh, injury from external sources there can be injury to the lateral third also mm -hmm. and uh, rare one is the medial one third and the serious one is medial one third why? Uh, intravascular injury. Uh, intravascular injuries, intrathoracic injuries can be more over that area. Okay, so uh, uh, so in when you are getting a this patient is having an isolated clavicular injury. So what all things is um, clavicle covering? Like which all organs are inside the clavicle? Major uh, lungs. Lungs is there. Then any major vessels or any subclavian. Subclavian vein and artery is there. Then brachial plexus. plexus are there. So uh, we need to <coughs> look for any injury to these things are there. <coughs> Our main concern is any vascular injury or any lung injury or any um, neuro neurological problems. Okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> so this patient what was done? Um, um, a patient was first um, immobilized with, uh, with figure of 8 and arm, mm. uh, arm sling mm. and then um, after x-ray uh, we informed orthopedics mm. so they were they done or, 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 or if open reduction and internal fixation with merrill implants okay so when will you so in all cases of clavicular fracture will you call ortho there is neurovascular injuries and this patient and didn't have neurovascular injuries mm. then when will you involve orthopedics um, visible um, deformities or something. Oh. Mm. So <coughs> it depends on when will you call emergency orthopedic. So suppose yeah. you are working in a peripheral hospital, you don't have any orthopedician on call right now. So uh, it depends on when you are calling the orthopedician now or shifting to orthopedic center or it depends on uh, it, you can do it after 24 hours also. Mm. So when will, when which all patients require emergency orthopedic intervention? Neurovascular, mm, neurovascular deficit, deficit. then <coughs> open fracture, open fracture, then uh, as you told, deformities that can across the skin. So sometimes it might be pointing onto mm -hmm. the skin. It might not be an open fracture if it is expo uh, it is very close to the skin. That also requires. Mm -hmm. Then <coughs> that is emergency requirement for orthopedics. Then. Um, like when will you call uh, when will you plan on an urgent like not emergency when uh, orthopedic intervention when else it is required so this patient why was it done pain and deformity was sir uh, it might be might not be because of deformity can be either because of shortening can be there uh, fracture displacement shortening if usually <coughs> males if there is more than 1.8 millimeter and females like 1.4 millimeter displacement they consider so but we can just remember as 2 centimeter any up, uh, display uh, shortening more than 2 millimeter um, um, 2 centimeter we'll have to plan for a surgery it might not be an emergency surgery but within the next 24 to 48 hours the surgical management then when else so, uh, orthopedic intervention is required And there is <coughs> comminuted fracture. So shortening comminuted fracture uh, will add to invert. <laughs> then what else? Um, neurovascular we have already told emergency management is required. Then any displaced fracture like displaced. How will the clavicle get displaced if there is fracture? Um, we, um, low lateral uh, port will be uh, pulled down mm. by the uh, pect um, pectoralis and the gravity and mm. the medial will be upwards by standard cloudomaster. So if there is a displacement like that we will have to uh, involve yeah. <coughs> orthopedics. Okay. And you have told about uh, 
in case of conservative management we will be planning on putting a figure of eight bandage and the sling so what is the difference between sling and figure of eight bandage figure of it will be more for pain relief and immobilization mm. and uh, <coughs> if, if arm sling will be for uh, with minimum display if there is minimum displacement we can give for arm sling arm sling so <laughs> either figure of eight or sling can be used so how will you put the sling figure of eight will be like uh, eight uh, sling sling place, place the patient arm abduct, adducted and uh, in, uh, internal rotated then keep where will the sling come from it should come so opposite opposite shoulder so fracture is in the right shoulder so it should come from the left shoulder and it should immobilize up to this area so what is the disadvantage if this much part is put in sling stiffness ah, joint elbow stiffness can be there then patient won't be able to use right upper limb properly uh, patient won't be if suppose the patient is not moving fingers that also will get affected uh, <coughs> whereas if you are uh, so uh, whereas if you are using figure of eight bandage what will be the adva one advantage of figure of eight bandages we don't we can use our elbow the disadvantage figure of eight just imagine you are putting figure of eight bandage one problem is putting its a figure of eight bandage itself will be difficult with for sling we can put whether in a patient can put by himself but figure of eight bandage somebody else should put it for the patient then it might be too tight there can be edema skin traction injuries will be there so that is a disadvantage of figure of eight bandage more comfortable for the patient will be a sling only arm sling only but <coughs> uh, problem is this elbow problems elbow uh, mobility issues all these things will be there so uh, in such individuals we will have to ask for occasional elbow movements like uh, ask those patient to do uh, pronation supination and extension and flexion in between even though the patient is in sling okay then what else can be done Uh, we have told about ice pack application uh, why why do we put ice pack to relieve pain and edema okay so how much time should we put an ice pack in any fracture can put up to 24 to 48 hours it is required but make sure that in an hour you are putting only 20 to 30 minutes Mm. and you will have to remove after some time and if the patient is sleeping and all don't keep it over that area continuously because patient might not be knowing and all if, especially in neurovascular deficit anything is there if that sensation is lost it will be dangerous only so <laughs> that is a role of ice pack and sling we have discussed and what are the complications which you can see in clavicle fracture malunion malunion came when will it heal well about 2 to 8 weeks ah children it will heal within 6 weeks and in case of adult it might take up to 12 weeks okay so uh, this patient if you are planning to discharge from er when will you ask the patient to re to get reviewed after 6 weeks yeah. okay if if suppose the patient is having any ongoing pain or any difficulty you can ask to review as early as possible or within 1 week and after that uh, uh, so uh, you can ask this patient to review after 6 weeks if that if uh, if the patient is not having any other problems within those days so we can see whether it is united or not and when will you call it as malunion oh, visible deformities uh, with a uh, irreversible uh, non union and mal union we can label those terms only even after 4 months and all okay. if it is not united properly then you will call it as um, non union like that okay then uh, what are the other complications so immediate complications we have mentioned and in such cases we will have to involve orthopedics these are the late complications suppose we are having a lateral one third fracture what else what all complications do you need to anticipate <coughs> shoulder movement shoulder abnormality so they that can involve the um, so it is of three classifications in that class 3 will involve the uh, intraarticular uh, intraarticular that acromioclavicular joint will get involved okay you know the classification uh, mm. distal clavicular fracture type 1 is fracture is distal to coracoclavicular ligament and the ligament remaining intact type 2 there are 2a and b Uh, 2a is <coughs> fracture is medial to coracoclavicular ligament and ligament is intact and 2b it is between coracoacromial ligament uh, 
uh, with conoid ligament torn and trapezoid ligament intact uh, or lateral to coracoacromial ligament with both ligaments disrupted and three is intraarticular fracture through acromioclavicular joint joint okay so if you are having a lateral one third when mm, all will involve orthopedics intraarticular fractures intraarticular fractures uh, along with the indications which we have mentioned previously mm. anything more than type 2 we need to involve orthopedics okay so what is so what is the abnormality in type 3 along uh, sorry in lateral one third fracture along with the other complications which we have discussed there can be frozen shoulder or shoulder abnormality and joint abnormalities also so that also will be another complications okay then coming to medial one third medial one third sternoclavicular mm. joint may be involved then then there can be Lung injuries. Uh, lung injuries can be there then uh, uh, as, he, as he told previously if there is medial one third fracture what other uh, uh, major vessels yes, can be involved those things can okay. be involved okay uh, suppose we are having along um, associated rib fractures also <coughs> which all rib fractures are considered very serious first, first two first two ribs okay then First two ribs, if there is, it is fractured, we need to always suspect an uh, intrathoracic uh, injury or any major vessel injury. Okay. Along with that, any other like flail chest and all, what, how will... More the, than three uh, 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 consecutive fractures. Uh, consecutive ribs uh, fracture in two or more two different or sides. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, then all, the, it will become significant. Okay. So, this patient, we have immobilized the patient initially from the ER. We have given analgesics. Ice pack application also okay. could have been done. And this patient was taken for procedure. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Any other classification or anything? Uh, uh, there are all man classification. All man classification, group 1 is medial fractures. Uh, group 2 is lateral and group 3 is medial. <coughs> and Robinson fracture is the type 1, 2, 3. Mm -hmm. One is medial one fifth, second is middle three fifth, and third is lateral one fifth. And near classification, type one is middle, two is lateral and have three subtypes, and three is medial. And cray classification, type one is middle, two is lateral and which have five subtypes, and three is medial, also having five subtypes. Okay, okay. Anything else?